Of all the conventional medical treatments which could be used for ME-CFS, I believe that immunoabsorption is arguably the most powerful. Now this blood washing procedure used in German dialysis clinics, which takes out autoantibodies from the body, has been shown in several clinical trials to have a very promising effect on ME-CFS. However, when you look around on the internet, what you don't tend to find so much of are the anecdotal uh, discussions of this therapy. There are not so many patients who share their experience. There hardly exist any interviews, and we don't really see doctors just talking about their overall experience of treating patients with immunoabsorption over several years. However, at the recent Charité conference in Berlin, Dr. Georg Schlieper from the Dialysis Centre at Hanover gave a presentation in which he talked about his experience of treating ME-CFS patients now over several years with this therapy. I found his insights fascinating. I found the case studies he shared very interesting and I'm looking forward to sharing those with you in today's video. But first, my name is Patrick Usher and I am author of the book Understanding ME-CFS and Strategies for Healing, in which I break down some of the latest, most exciting research into ME-CFS and long COVID, as well as the various treatment strategies that have helped me to improve my quality of life as an ME-CFS patient. The links for that book are down below. So as I say, we're going to be breaking down Dr. Georg Schlieper's presentation today. But before that, in case you're completely new to the topic of immunoabsorption, I will briefly describe the treatment and how it works. Um, I have done a range of previous videos on this, uh, one of which is linked up above right now, so you can always go and check that out as well. But basically, it is a blood washing procedure. Uh, it involves putting a line in one arm. The blood goes into a filter. Um, autoantibodies are taken out of the blood in the filter, and then the uh, blood that has been, as it were, cleansed of the autoantibodies is put back in to another line. And typically speaking, you have about five treatments of, of immunoabsorption over two weeks. And what this does is it reduces uh, what could be termed pathological autoantibodies, um, including ones that play a role in the pathophysiology of ME-CFS. It takes them out of the blood. And um, when you take the autoantibodies out of the blood, the autoantibodies that are living in the tissues are released by the body into the blood because it likes to keep a balance between the autoantibody levels in the tissues and the blood. So the autoantibodies are taken out of the tissues into the bloodstream, um, thereby relieving the tissues of the burden of those autoantibodies. And then the immuno and then the next immunoabsorption treatment takes out the newly released autoantibodies and then you get more released from the tissues and so on and so forth. And then at the end of the two weeks, you have a profoundly reduced um, autoimmune burden on the body. Now, you might be saying, okay, that sounds interesting, but um, what are these autoantibodies doing? Why are they problematic? Well, ME-CFS is associated with a range of autoantibodies um, which belong to a specific group against G-protein coupled receptors. And to cut a very long story short, these autoantibodies can kind of uh, get into the blood vessels and there they can um, limit the perfusion of blood into the muscles. So there's a very direct reason for exercise intolerance. They can get actually into the heart and they can reduce its capacity to pump blood effectively. And in fact, some of these autoantibodies are also found in heart failure. Um, they can go directly onto the cell receptors and impair their functioning very important in ME-CFS. And they can also work on the kidneys to forcefully excrete salt, thereby worsening the low blood volume, and so on and so forth. And in fact, it may not even be just these um, autoantibodies that are uh, playing a role in ME-CFS. We now know that, um, that there are others that are starting to be implicated, some which directly lead to the buildup of calcium in the muscle cells, others which are actually building up in the brain and causing problems there in the nervous system, etc. So it's basically like these autoantibodies can develop and exert a significant pathological effect on the body of the ME-CFS patient, such that they're kind of at baseline reducing health and functionality of the body and favoring the development and continuation of ME-CFS by um, reducing blood perfusion, reducing cellular function, and causing you know, autonomic disturbances. So that's why these autoantibodies are problematic, and it's why people actually do immunoabsorption. They can feel much better and really quickly, but we'll come back to that point later. Anyway, that's some background. 
Now let's consider what Dr. Georg Schlieper had to say. And first of all, I'll just talk about his overall findings after performing this therapy for several years, and then we'll consider some of the case studies. So first of all, um, he has treated 24 MECFS patients over the last few years. And although, as I say, this is not part of a randomized controlled trial, you know, this is simply sharing anecdotal information, it's still very interesting. And so what he did, very basic, is he just asked people a health questionnaire uh, before treatment and then again four weeks after, and also a visual analog fatigue scale. Now these are very, very straightforward, but nevertheless, they can give us uh, a lot of information. So with the health questionnaire, it's simply asking people, you know, how good or bad is your health in general at the moment? And zero is like the worst you could possibly imagine, and 100 would be you're totally free of all disease, and you are, you know, it's the best you can imagine, you're off climbing Mount Everest or whatever. And then there's the analog, uh, and then the fatigue scale is simply asking people to describe their global fatigue in general, with zero being terrible and 10 being normal. So he got people to do these before and then one month after the treatment. And so out of the 24 patients, these were the basic results. And so what we see on the left with the general health questionnaire, before immunoabsorption, people were at around 35% of what they would wish for their health to be. And four weeks after immunoabsorption, this had risen to uh, around 56-57% of where they would like to be. And that's a, a very significant result in the context of MECFS, particularly when um, this is like in comparison to where people would wish for their health to be at an optimal level. So to be at 57% when you have MECFS relative to what you would wish to be overall is actually pretty good. Um, and I'm sure those watching this would agree. And then in terms of the fatigue severity scale, uh, before immunoabsorption it was around 3, so that's pretty bad. And then after the immunoabsorption it had moved to 5.2. So again, you know, quite a significant improvement that's going to have a good impact on day-to-day -day functioning. And then what Dr. Schlieper went on to do was to further subdivide um, these 24 patients into more severe ones and people who were more functional to begin with. And this is important because first of all, we want to see if people who are more you know, badly affected by MECFS, if they can tolerate this treatment and benefit. But also, um, this is the patient population that really most needs help. So it's very important to kind of quantify this. So what he did was, is he divided the patients up into two groups and the people who had initially said that their uh, health, their general health um, was between 15 to 30 percent of what they wanted to be, were put into the more severe group. And then the people who said their, that their initial health was between 40 to 70 percent of where they wanted to be, were put into um, the less severe group. And so in this case, the results are actually also very interesting. You see that the more severe patients went from about 22% on average to just shy of 50%, um, which is a huge improvement for someone in that situation. And then people who were more functional to begin with, they went from about 47% to around 67, 68%. And, you know, if you're someone who's currently pretty functional, then you're suddenly at almost 70% of where you'd like to be. Like, that's manna from heaven, uh, really. So, those results are all super encouraging, I would say. This is just a short interruption to say that this video is sponsored by Normalite. Normalite is the most helpful supplement that I have found for my MECFS, and I have been using it now for three years. It is a form of oral rehydration solution designed specifically for POTS and MECFS patients, and it works by increasing blood volume highly effectively. Uh, one study showed that it was as effective as a as one litre of saline IV in increasing blood volume in POTS patients. And for me, as someone who struggles with low blood volume, this is an indispensable supplement. I can feel absolutely terrible in a very bad crash, hardly able to move, and then I drink a litre of Normalite, and suddenly I can sit up, get up, move around, and actually engage in the day. So check out the link in the description box below to order your own packets of Normalite. And so before we go on now to consider some like specific uh, case reports from his experience, I think it's just worth reflecting on something here, which is, you know, a lot of doctors, the people who don't know about MECFS, will say things like, oh, nothing you can do for ME patients, you know, playing into this idea that there's nothing going on, there's no, there's no 
distinct pathophysiology and therefore like what's the point like whatever you give them they don't get better and it is true that a very common experience of MECFS patients with trying to pursue treatments is that they don't actually get better from them uh, uh, or they even get worse that's more like when you're shooting in the dark if you actually know what the pathophysiology of an illness is and you actually have a treatment that's very targeted to the nature of the problem, then you absolutely can have uh, significant improvements and even dramatic improvements. And that's because you're actually targeting the problem. You know, although autoantibodies are not like the be-all and end-all in MECFS, they do play a key role in the overall pathophysiology for most patients. And there are reasons why these autoantibodies in particular are kind of bound up with the rest of the vicious cycles. So if you can target those, not only do you get the immediate improvement from removing the effects of those autoantibodies, because the effects of those autoantibodies are linked to so many of the other vicious cycles, well then everything else can also improve uh, commensurately as well. For an illness where, where the general reputation is, it's so hard to improve things, it just goes to show that when you know what's actually happening, you really can. Okay, so let's now consider some of these case studies. Um, the first was a 45-year-old who had had long COVID since September 2020. She improved very significantly with immunoabsorption, going from 30 to 60 on the Bell scale. And the Bell scale, for those who don't know, was developed by Dr. David Bell, who was an MECFS specialist. And basically, um, it des describes someone's general capacities at different levels. And so, for example, someone at 30 has moderate to severe symptoms at rest, severe symptoms with any exercise, overall activity level reduced to 50% of expected, usually confined to the house, unable to perform any strenuous tasks, able to perform desk work two to three hours a day, but requires rest periods. Whereas 60 is mild to moderate symptoms at rest, daily activity limitation clearly noted, overall functioning at 70 to 90%, unable to work full-time in jobs requiring physical labor, but able to work full-time in light activity if hours are flexible. And so moving on now to the second patient, 53-year-old uh, woman who had VAX syndrome, so MECFS from post-VAX, uh, along with pericardial effusion, so that's fluid leaking out from the heart. And she was um, basically very ill. She was moving towards having to retire. Um, and she, her Bell scale score initially was only 20, so that's very limited. And basically, she had a dramatic improvement. So after the third treatment, she said that sleeping through the night was possible. And after the fifth treatment, she said she felt like a newborn. And she actually did seven treatments altogether. So she added two more of her own accord. And when she'd finished, she had gone from 20 on the Bell scale to 75. So that's an extraordinary result. And again, just showing how quick a turnaround uh, one can have with when you're targeting the problem. And then finally, and very interestingly, this was someone who was probably the most severe patient that was treated because his bell scale was zero. So he was completely bedridden, um, you know, absolutely um, non-functional. And after his immunoabsorptions, he improved to 20 on the bell scale, which means that he can now use a wheelchair or walk short distances around the house. And for him, uh, Dr. Schlieper said this was a very, you know, he was a very happy with this result because it's still a huge difference in quality of life. And he now continues having uh, one treatment every month or so. So those are the findings of Dr. Schlieper. We see people improving quite dramatically and in ways that are very meaningful for improving quality of life or potentially even working towards recovery by reducing the overall burdens. And also, uh, you know, irrespective of the fact that people's quality of life can be so improved, this is a treatment which tells us so much about what's actually going on in MECFS. I mean, some people say, oh, the autoantibodies don't matter, but then you have to be able to explain why these people are improving so much. So there you go. I wonder what you think of this. I wonder if you've tried immunoabsorption. I wonder if you would consider trying it. For me, um, it's not something I've tried myself. I did test positive for these autoantibodies using the Cell Trend lab. And I personally believe that the greatest limiting factor for me to actually be uh, improving and you know, hopefully even recovering from MECFS, is that I have these autoantibodies that are exerting a consistent um, uh, reduction in my baseline health and capacity. That's my personal belief when I think about my ongoing symptoms. Um, it is something that I would consider. It's a very expensive treatment. 
which is the problem. Um, for five treatments, it would cost around €12,000. And then, of course, there is the gambling aspect of immunoabsorption, which is that you can do it, the autoantibodies are taken out, you feel much better, but because you're not actually targeting the mechanisms which directly create the autoantibodies in the first place in the plasma B cells, um, they may come back, and in fact, they often do. I'm in contact with a patient in Germany quite often, and he's done immu immunoabsorption several times, um, and on each occasion, he feels way better. And then a few months later, the autoantibodies uh, are back in full strength, and he feels worse again. You know, and I also have a friend uh, who I interviewed on this channel before. I linked the video up above. And he, he traveled to uh, Germany twice to do immunoabsorption. He had a very promising result the first time. I remember he said like he, he had a shower and then he got out of the shower and his skin was actually rosy after the, um, after, you know, the heat from the shower. And he hadn't experienced that in years, but it just showed that literally overnight, his blood perfusion had improved dramatically. But unfortunately, in his case, the results did not last and the autoantibodies came back. But then, you know, as I say, some people, uh, they improve and they keep the improvements, or at least they keep enough of the improvements to have made it all worthwhile and their quality of life remains consistently better. And occasionally you come across people who recover from using immunoabsorption. Like a couple of years ago, I watched at uh, the 2023 Charité conference the case study of a 12-year-old girl who was severe. She was bedridden. She had five immunoabsorption treatments and that was the turning point that led to her full recovery. So it has this sort of gambling-like aspect. Um, I think it would be important to do it at the right moment to kind of maximise the chances of long-term uh, improvement. But there's also this option of using... Uh, drugs that deplete the B cells or modify the B cells in some way so that they're not producing autoantibodies. So basically do the immunoabsorption, take out the autoantibodies and then take a drug that stops the autoantibodies coming back over the coming months to really try and influence the outcome in a much more impactful way. And I plan to do a video on those kinds of um, treatments as well in the future. But anyway, basically that's it for this video. It's a very powerful treatment in principle and I'll be interested to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, please leave your thoughts and comments down below and I will see you in the next video.